everyone, welcome to today's video on describing and performing sequences of transformations. So we're in our transformations unit and we've already learned a lot. We've learned that transformations are changes in the position, shape, or size of the figure. We've learned that there are types of transformations called rigid transformations, and those are transformations that keep the size and the shape of the figure the same. Or in other words, transformations where the pre-image and the image are congruent, meaning they have the same side lengths and the same angles. We learned three types of those. Translations, which we can think of as slides. Reflections, which we can think of as mirrors or flipping. And rotations, which we can think of as spinning or turning. Okay, so we've learned those three, but we've learned them all separately. Today, what we're doing is we're just putting them together. Sequences of transformations are when we have two or more transformations Occur occurring in order to some figure. Okay, so note that when we have the word sequence, that, that um, implies that there's an order to it, and order does matter. Now, there are some combinations of transformations that the order won't actually matter, but as a general matter, it does, the order matters. Okay, so that is going to be important when you're describing a sequence of transformations. It'd be like, first this happens, then this happens. And again, as you can see in the picture, right, we have this pentagon. This is my pre-image. Then we're doing some sort of slide. We get it to our middle shape. We can call it the image, but then we're going to do another thing. Then we're going to reflect, and then we get our image down here. Okay, so there's two things that we did, right? First, we did a translation, then we did a reflection. That's all a sequence of transformation is, is it's combining doing two or more of those transformations together. So here's an example to kind of summarize the key concept for us. Here I have triangle ABC, and we're describing a, trans a sequence of transformations that takes triangle ABC to triangle A double prime, B double prime, and C double prime, which is here in orange. Okay, so we're trying to go from our blue triangle to our orange one. And our blue is what we call our pre-image. That is the original figure, the pre-image. Then here you'll see we have um, triangle A prime, B prime, and C prime. This is like a middle step, right? It's gonna take two or more transformations, in this case, two transformations, to get from our pre-image um, in blue to our orange, whoops, to our orange image. Okay, so we've taken our pre-image, ABC, We've gone right, one, two, three, and we get triangle A prime, B prime, and C prime. But that's not it. Then we are followed by, secondly, notice the order, a 90 degree clockwise rotation about the origin. Okay, so I can check that quickly in my image, in my um, drawing. I have my origin. I will take here's C prime and here's C double prime. See, that makes a 90 degree. Um, angle, so we are rotating that 90 degree, and that is clockwise. So there were two steps. First, we had to translate, then we had to rotate. And that is how we get from our original shape, our pre-image, ABC, to our final image, A double prime, B double prime, and C double prime. So just take a note there. You already know you're very comfortable with calling this a prime b prime c prime now we just have two apostrophe symbols um so it's like quotation marks would be if you were typing it and it is pronounced double prime okay all right well, we will look at one example of performing a sequence of transformations and then one example of describing it all right so here we have um triangle c d e we're told to reflect triangle c d e across the y-axis and then translate it three units up. So step number one, we're going to reflect across the y-axis. Note the order, we need to do that first. Then we need to translate up three. Okay. So let's quickly remind ourselves how we do these individually. First thing we need to do is reflect our shape across the y-axis. The y-axis is our vertical axis. To reflect, remember we're gonna find the distance that our shape is away from our line of reflection 
and then go the same distance but in the opposite direction. So to get from my line of reflection to D, I'm going one, two, two units left. Okay, so to find D prime, I'm going to go the same distance, one, two, but to the right, two units right. Okay, so this will be my D prime. Now we did, we did learn already how to do these reflections, so I'm not gonna spend a ton of time getting into that, but just remember, we do the general rule here is we're finding our distance from the line of reflection and then going that same distance but in the opposite direction. So once we do that reflection, we will get here. We're going to call this triangle um, C prime, B prime, E prime. This is all good. We're great so far. But we have to be careful because we're not done, right? We've just done step one. So now it's time to do step two translate up three. So I'll keep that, um, keep the triangle that I just drew, and then I'm going to translate up three. So that means I take every point, every vertex, and I move up one, two, three, up one, two, three, up one, two, three, and that will give me the new points. This is my new D prime. This is my new E prime, and this is my new C prime. I took every point and I translated up three. Then I can connect those points, and there we go. Now I have, oh, not E prime, E prime and C prime, but C double prime, D double prime, and E double prime, because I'm just showing that I've done not one, but two transformations. Okay, so that's all it is. Um, I could leave, like I could erase my blue one because that's really just like a middle step in this situation, or I could leave it. Either way, it's, it's showing our work, but either way, we need to make sure we have our purple one, which is the reflected and then translated shape. All right. So that was performing a transformation. Then you're going to have to figure out how can we describe one? So this is asking us to describe a sequence, a sequence of transformations that maps rectangle W, X, Y, Z to W prime, X prime, Y prime, Z prime. There is more than one correct answer, okay? So note here that we're, we're having a sequence of transformations. So there's gonna need to be at least one, two steps that happen. Um, they're not calling this like Y double prime, Z double prime, W double prime, X double prime, um, because they're not, they were, they were only like asking us to describe what's happening here. But there is two, sta two steps and like two transformations that have to occur in order to get this shape there. So let's talk about what we could do. As this describes, there is more than one correct answer. You can come up with infinitely many correct sequence of transformations that take you from one shape to another. Some will be completely ridiculous, like you go up one and then you go to down two and then you go up one and then you go left five, right? Like you can just keep coming up with things. All the sequence of transformation means is you're describing steps, different transformations that will ultimately get us from our pre-image to our image. But normally we don't wanna come up with more steps than necessary. So we're gonna to try to come up with a simple one. So looking here, I noticed off the bat that I'm gonna to need to rotate this shape. So I wanna talk through with you how I know that. I see that my blue rectangle in my pre-image, it's like facing long ways. Like if I have a piece of paper, it's like this kind of rectangle. And then in my image, it's up and down. All right, so the only way that can happen through the transformations we learned is by rotating it. Reflecting it actually isn't going to change it. If we reflect it, it's still going to be facing like the long ways. So the only way we're going to be able to get this um, W, X, Y, Z from long ways to up and down is going to be by rotating it 90 degrees or 270 degrees because that's really the same thing, just depending on the direction. Okay, so that's going to be my first step. Again, if I wanted to rotate it here, I could do that, 
or I could go this way. It wouldn't actually matter. I need to go 90 degrees in one direction. It's going to be different, but I can just pick one and then we'll see what happens and go from there. So let's go clockwise. So what I just did, um, and I fast forwarded through for you guys, is I just did the 90 degree clockwise rotation about the origin and I got to this situation. Now I can tell from here I am closer, like I'll get there. But I also can tell I'm still not that close because I have X down here when I want that to be like at the top. So I could reflect it across the Y axis, but then it's still going to be down at the bottom. So then I'm going to need to reflect it again. So I'm seeing now, okay, maybe this wasn't the best option. I still could do it. It was just going to take me more than two transformations. So I could reflect it that way and then I could flip it and then I could flip it again and then I could translate if I need to and I totally could get it and if you were in this situation and it said there's more correct more than one correct answer you know have as many steps as you want to then like feel free to keep going for it but I'm gonna look at this point and say actually I think this is probably more complicated than I meant so what if I go back and instead of going clockwise why don't I go counterclockwise There we go, now that looks a lot better. Now again, I didn't talk about how I did that transformation, that rotation, um, I did kind of use this coordinate rule as well as like mentally drew the 90 degree angles for myself. But if you're still not comfortable with rotations, then you should go back to our rotations video. Okay, but that's not really the point of today. So here's my rotation 90 degrees counterclockwise about the origin. Now I see, oh okay, this here I look like I'm in pretty good shape. I have the x is here, x prime is here, I'm trying to get there, y prime, y prime. So it looks like they're all kind of lined up. Now I'm just going to need to slide my shape down. Okay, that's what I'm noticing. So I think now I'm going to need to translate or slide down some number of units. All right, let's figure out how we do that. Well, I'll pick. Here's x prime and here's x, or x prime, x double prime, and I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I need to go 6 units down to get those two points that ultimately are going to need to be on top of each other, they need to correspond. Okay, I could see that that's going to be true for any of these points. I need to go 6 down as well to get from the what I called Z prime and what's ultimately called Z prime but from them. Um, so I need to go six units down. First we rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise and then we slid down six units. Okay, so that's a great answer. And again, there are a lot of other ones. This is probably the easiest one. It's only gonna take two steps, um, but it's not the only one out there. All right, awesome. So that's the sequence of transformations. We're just putting our skills about rotations, reflections, and translations together. Great job, everyone.